In this video, we will talk about the inverse sine function. If we have a certain function, then to get the inverse, we need to interchange x and y. Here we have the graph of the trigonometric function y equals sine of x, and the domain of this function is the interval from negative infinity to positive infinity, and the range is the interval from negative 1 to positive 1 inclusive. And the interval from negative infinity to positive infinity, this function is not a one-to-one -one function because it does not pass the horizontal line test. This test tells us that if we draw a horizontal line over a graph, and if this line intersects the graph at more than one point, then this function does not have an inverse function. So on the interval from negative infinity to positive infinity, y equals sine of x does not have an inverse. To better understand this, let's take a look at the figure to the right. Here we have the graph of the sine function, and if this function would have an inverse function, then the graph of the inverse function would be a reflection of the graph of this function about the line y equals x. So if we take the graph of this function and we reflect it about y equals x, then we get this graph. However, the problem is that this graph does not represent a function because it does not pass the vertical line test. And the vertical line test tells us that if we draw a vertical line over a graph, and if this line crosses the graph in more than a point, then the graph does not represent a function. So then, how can we find the inverse of the sine function? What we have to do is to restrict the domain of the sine function to the interval from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So I will go and erase the graph to the left of negative pi over 2 and to the right of positive pi over 2. So now we have the sine function only on the interval from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Then on this restricted domain, the sine function will pass the horizontal line test, and this means that on this interval, the sine function has an inverse. This inverse function is y equals inverse sine at x. And now if we reflect this graph about the line y equals x, then the graph of the inverse function will stretch from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So now we need to erase all this graph below negative pi over 2 and all this graph above positive pi over 2. So here we have the graph of the inverse sine function. The domain of the inverse sine function is the interval from negative 1 to positive 1, and the range is the interval from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So to get the inverse sine function, we need to start with y equals sine of x restricted on the interval from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. And now to obtain the inverse sine function, we need to interchange or to swap x and y. That will give us x equals sine of y. This is already the inverse sine function, and we need to solve it for y. Then when we solve it for y, we have two notations we can use, and one of them is y equals inverse sine of x, and the other one is y equals arc sine of x. Both of these notations are widely used in many textbooks. Now let's talk more about the first notation. First, note that this negative 1 is not an exponent. So it would be incorrect to write that inverse sine of x is the same as 1 over sine of x. Instead, this notation means the inverse sine function and this notation is sine of x raised to exponent negative 1, which means 1 over sine of x. So it's very important to distinguish between these two notations. 
And now let's talk about the meaning of the inverse sine function. In a sine function y equals sine of x, x represents an angle and y represents the value of the sine function. In an inverse sine function y represents the angle and x represents the value of a sine function. So when we find inverse sine of x we find an angle and the interval from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. We can also show this interval using the unit circle and on the unit circle if from 0 we move counterclockwise we will get pi over 2 which is the same as 90 degrees and if we move clockwise we will get negative pi over 2 which is negative 90 degrees. And now each time we evaluate an inverse sine function we will get an angle on the interval from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. For example if we want to evaluate inverse sine of square root of 3 over 2 then we will get pi over 3. This angle is in quadrant 1 and it is an angle on the interval from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Now let's evaluate inverse sine of negative 1 half and we can use the calculator or the unit circle and we will get negative pi over 6. This angle is in quadrant 4 and again it is an angle on the interval from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So when we find the inverse sine function we find an angle on the interval from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Now this is all I wanted to show you in this video. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching.